Welcome to PowerPoint 2010 Basics for Creating Decks. I'm Trainer Laurie. What are PowerPoint decks? Also known as presentations, you can show your slides in slideshow format, you can show transitions between slides, or you can show animations on the slides. We'll show you from beginning to end how to create a PowerPoint presentation. First, to open PowerPoint, click on your Start button and then type in PowerPoint. And it's a good idea once you've opened it to pin the program to the taskbar by right clicking on the icon. And then you could simply pin it, you'll always have it available. To create a new deck, click on File New, Blank Presentation, Create. Now notice there's a lot of different templates already in here. Templates are pre built uh, presentations with formatting that you might want. But I think to start, you should start with a blank one and then decide if you want to add formatting later. So now you have a brand new PowerPoint presentation with only one slide, and guess what you do next? It's pretty intuitive. You simply click to add title. Let's look at the user interface. At the top is the ribbon with all the commands on it. On the left is the slide panel. You can see all the uh, little thumbnails of the slides, but also the outline. Click the tab at the top and you can change it to outline view. So if you're content heavy rather than photo heavy, then you can uh, use the outline. You have placeholders on the slides that are pre-built that you can add text to or you can ignore them if you want or you can delete them. But uh, it's pretty handy if you need to add text to just use a placeholder. And if you want to change your placeholder, you can go up to the Layout tab, on, on uh, way up on the Home tab, look for the Layout command, and you can change it. So even if you already have data in it, you can change your layout to uh, have different placeholders. Down at the bottom is a place for notes. You can actually print out the notes so that you can have them when you're making a presentation, for example, and everybody will see the slide, and you will see the notes as well as the slide. There's the zoom. When I'm working on uh, some image and I want to uh, make it really, really big so I can uh, make some very small, subtle changes to it, then I can just use the slider for the zoom. Or you can simply click in this button and it fits the slide to the current window, so it'll fit whatever size your window is. But now let's look at views. The views, you can see, I've got them up here where you can see them nice and big, but they're also down here. This is where you will actually see them is down here. They're very small here. And you can find it under the View tab as well. So this is Normal View. This is where you can see your thumbnails down the side, your notes across the bottom, and I also happen to have two other panes open called Selection and Visibility and Animation Pane. You can uh, turn those on or not. It's up to you. This is how you turn on your Animation Pane, but I think they're very handy to have. The next one is called Slide Sorter View, and this is a place where you can sort your slides simply by clicking the slide and dragging it someplace else. This is Views tab. Uh, this is called the Reading Views, and the Reading View allows you to see the taskbar as well as the slides. So it's a lot like the next one we're going to see, only you still have control of your computer. This one is called Slideshow View, and you can see that you lose control of your computer. All you see is the slide. This is perfect for when you're presenting um, by using um, a, a projector or um, some kind of an online service. Uh, this would be a good option because that way all you see is deck. Now, how do we create a new slide? Any guesses? Well, hopefully you looked up here and you saw New Slide Option. Just click that, and remember we have uh, different placeholders, and so you can look at the different layouts uh, right here and choose which one you want. Remember, once you've put data in it, you can still change it, so it's not written in stone. You can also right-click on the thumbnail, and you have the option to create a new slide, or I like to choose duplicate slide, because then it will have all the formatting and everything will look the same as the first slide, and then I just change either the photo or the text, or both. This is what the title and content looks like on the layouts. And you can see here, when I do that, it creates that placeholder, and I just simply click to add the text. However, you have two options when you click to add text. Uh, if you click on the line itself, then it becomes a global change. For example, let's say that I already have text in the uh, box, but I want to be able to change the font, or the size, or the color. And so I click on the line, and it becomes a solid line, and I can change everything in that box. Or I can click inside 
the box and now my cursor is this eye beam and it's uh, or bar and it shows it inside the text and you can see that the outside is a hash uh, or um, dash line and this is how I can make ch letter changes instead of a global change all right so I've created a new slide and I have all these insert options let's look at the first one it's called insert table when I do that it creates a table and all I have to do is start adding text to it. Insert chart creates an Excel spreadsheet and, and then uh, the chart so you just choose the type of chart that you want it creates the Excel spreadsheet you replace the uh, fake data with your own personal data and then you have an Excel chart in PowerPoint just that easy. To insert a smart art graphic, there have lots of options. You can see this is all, but look at all these different kinds of styles. I would look over them and get an idea of what I'm doing before I uh, made it make a decision. But for example, this is uh, one that shows it's called bending picture accent list, and uh, so it has places for text and it has places for images. And so I've replaced the text with my own text, and I've replaced the image holders with my own images. Video, clip art, and picture at the bottom all work essentially the same. And if I uh, click any of those, then on the right I will get this bar that asks what would you like. And uh, you can search for any word and in all the selected media types. So you can have an illustration, a photo, a video, or an audio. However, if you go to the Insert tab, you have so many more choices up there. So you might want to uh, get to know them, play with them a little bit, and you'll see lots of options. Now here is a um, slide that changes instantly just because I've changed the design. So remember, we can change the, the layout, the look, the design, simply by clicking one button. And we'll find that under the Design tab, and these are known as themes. If you click the drop down, you'll see a lot more. You can also save themes. So if you create your own, you can actually save it and then you can open it anytime you want. Animations tab allows us to change the way the objects look on the slide. In other words, how do they uh, build or show up? And so the animations tab allows the th objects on the slide to show up separately. And when I turn on, you can see how that spun t toward you where you can see it. When I turn on the animation pane up here, I turn it on here and then it shows down on the side here. I can have something as simple as one picture that enters at, on a click. Because it has a one, that means it's on a click. And I can see up here it says on a click. It could also be with previous or after previous. So they could come in automatically essentially. Or I can have a whole bunch of them, <laughs> and I've had a lot of them that look like this. It's very complex, and uh, it can be very confusing, but after a while, you'll get used to it. Did you notice how that slide transitioned in? That actually was called flip, and that is an exciting transition, and you probably wouldn't want to use that on all your slides. However, if you find a subtle one that you do like, you can apply to all. That is a transition is for changes between slides. You can also choose if you want to advance that slide on a mouse click. That means you'd have to hit the mouse click for it to move to the next slide. Or you could record it so that it automatically um, moves after so many seconds. And you can see in slide sorter view that this one has animations and or transitions and that this is going to change after 24 seconds. Now when you're done creating all the things that you want in your deck, then you can save it with lots of different options. Mostly you'll just want to save it with a name, and when you do, it automatically saves it as a PPTX file. Uh, that's a PowerPoint in Excel, XML language. That means it's the, in the 2010 or 2013 version. However, if you change that type, then you can see that you can save it as a PDF, you can save it as a template. That means you can go back there and use it again and again, what, whatever is already in there. You can save it as a uh, JPEG, that's like a picture. And you can save it as a media, Windows Media Video, so that it will be a video that you can post, for example, on YouTube. Very convenient, very powerful. And now when you're 
decide that you want to print them, most people print, and by default it says print all slides and print print the full pages of slides in color. <laughs> That's a lot of color and you may not want 300 slides printed out in color. Uh, so you might want to change just to show certain slides or change from full page slides to for example the notes page and this is where you can actually see the notes that you have typed in uh, on each slide. You can also create handouts that show one slide per page or up to nine slides per page. So you have lots of options when you print. Subscribe to the Trainer Lori channel and if you like it, please click like. See you next time.